Hey, we are live. It's Ann C coming at you from the e-commerce business school and I have a really special couple that I met uh, this past weekend at the Simple Seller, I mean, with the name Simple, Simple Zon Simple Seller. Simple Zon Seller. Yeah. Uh, Perry and Kim Coughlin, am I yep. saying your name? Coughlin, yep. Coughlin, so you know, hi there Tracy. Thanks for jumping in here. Hey there Brian. So I thought you folks would enjoy this fun little connect up. So you guys have a really hardcore serious family operation. Yeah, we do. Which is you're anticipated to do $5 million this year through local retail arbitrage. Correct. Yes. So um, kudos to you for raising a big family to help you run your operation. Thanks. So yeah, and we like to um, put out this kind of information because a lot of people don't know that you can be a third party seller with Amazon. And a lot of people, they kind of scratch their heads. Is this really possible? Can you really do local retail arbitrage and make money? So why don't we go back in time a little bit. What was your career for you, Perry, prior to, Kim, you were doing mommy blogging, I believe it was. Yes, I was a stay-at-home mom, but we always had a couple little little side gigs, and mommy blogging was, was kind of a big one for us for a long time. A mommy blogger who was looking for additional ways to add income into the family, right? Yes. right. Now, were you the one who found this method? What's the storyline? Uh, I was the one who started it. We had a friend that was doing really well with it, and she reached out to us. To she, she was actually the friend who taught us how to do eBay in 1999. Oh, 1999. <laughs> 20, years, yeah. 20, 20 years we've known her online, and we've never met her in oh, person. Oh, wow. Isn't that something? Yeah. So she was on eBay, and you did eBay then too, right? Yes. Okay, and then she introduced you to Amazon and local retail arbitrage. Yes, yes. Right. And she started out in uh, thrift stores and used books, so that was how we started oh, out too. Starting with books. I the see gateway. My, yeah, that is the sure. gateway. There's Brian Cummings is our master, our director of training and coaching. He started with books. So, yeah. And we heard that over and over and over here. So many people started with books. Because there's a really low investment there. You can, right. you can scale yeah. that learning curve without making expensive mistakes. And we used to live in Ohio, so the library book sales were much more fertile ground for hunting oh. out-of-print books that sold really well on eBay at the time. Oh, yeah. okay. So you got introduced. Now, you were a... Um, what was it, a warehouse manager with hospital systems or something? Uh, well, I started with us in 1993, the week after my first daughter was born, as a janitor at a chemical manufacturing company in uh, East Central Ohio, and worked my way up to shipping manager, then transferred to Texas and ran a 20,000 square foot distribution center, got a new job for a catalog company. Largely books, right? Mostly books, a little mostly bit of toys books. and CDs. Okay. And, um, after that company shut down, I stepped into consulting for materials management efficiency in hospitals. And I, we did that about 18 months. Um, I tell people, well, I was flying from San Antonio, Texas to Fort Wayne, Indiana every week for 18 months. Oh, that's hard, hard for the mom. Yeah, well, yeah. It, it was hard on all of us. He, yeah. he used to work at a job where he could take the kids to, to work with him oh. if he wanted to, very yeah. family friendly, and then he was It was a homeschool publisher. Road. Oh, a so, homeschool publisher. Yeah, okay. so I could take my kids to work with me. They could do their schoolwork in the break room and then oh. help in the warehouse in the afternoon. And that's um, something, by the way, we have in common is we have both homeschooled, so I immediately had an affinity. I'm like, oh, I love this. I love your story. And so in you. that job, you had your kids come along and it oh, yeah. fit the family lifestyle, and then not so much after you got into these other positions. Right, okay. right. And I was miserable because you don't have a large family if you don't like your family, right? <laughs> So, um, Valerie called Kim. Yeah, Valerie reached out to us, and okay. she knew that we must be looking for a way to get Perry back home again. Oh. So she encouraged me to, to try this out, try out the FBA thing, and we just jumped right in. I, I tried a few things. Perry immediately saw the potential, and I never liked spending money. I'm really, really frugal. I'm tight. <laughs> so I was I was hesitant to really jump in, but he was like, spend, spend, do more, do more. Do more. So and you was, were relaying that story of when you, the first weekend, wasn't it? And then you made $400, and before right. you know it, you're pulling out the calculator, like, we're on to something here. I can yeah. I can get back home. Right. Yeah, well, we immediately saw this not only works, it scales. Right. Amazon was solving all our problems with our past, our side gigs and hustles that we tried and mm. never could really get off the ground. Right. Well, they, they, we strengthen each other. We're opposites in terms of our personalities, right? And then Amazon is really good at the things we're really bad at. 
So we, we built little e-commerce websites. Uh, we used to actually sell antique Bible pages. Oh, wow. Um, framed, we own, oh. we may still own GenevaBiblePages.com from oh. Geneva Bibles. We do. It redirects do it. to Etsy where we don't See? sell anything. Yeah. Redirect, you guys know what that one's about. Right. Um, so we did all these things, but we were kind of bad at shipping orders, even though I was the shipping manager. Oh. <laughs> but um, Amazon brings the customers, right? Mm -hmm. They provide all the customer service, so that took a huge, she always did customer service for our e-businesses. Yeah. And um, they ship really promptly. Yes. So, I, so I, with FBA, Amazon doing the shipping, you're right. like, they got the system and you just need to get the products in. 99% yeah. of our work is up front. So everywhere that we used to drop the ball, that we could drop the ball, Amazon is, is carrying the workload from that point forward. Right. That's cool. So a couple of things that stood out is, you showed a video. Well, first you showed a poorly designed shipping pathway. It was kind of colorful because I thought about um, my youngest son, David, who did our shipping in the basement. And I remember going through all of it. Of, oh, yeah, we got to go buy some shelves. Oh, should we have them over here? Should we have them over there? Right, uh, we'll have right. his desk over here and we'll have the table over there. And that whole thing. And you were showing all the steps. And then you showed how in your family business, in your warehouse, you have a, is this on your property, by the way? Uh, we scaled to about $2 million in sales in our garage. Oh, in your Actually, garage? We, it's we not now, but that's right. that's where we started for the first several years. Okay, I want right. that to get repeated. Can you say that one more time? Okay, so, well, we scaled to a $1 million in our garage. In annual sales. In annual gross sales. sales. Right. And then we hired our neighbor and we scaled to two million in his garage. Oh, okay. <laughs> and he hired his, our kids to ours. Right. And then last year, a year ago in February, we rented a, a 2,500 square foot commercial space, uh, okay. a, a warehouse, um, okay. and we've scaled last year to $4 million, and we're on track for five this year. Okay. And actually, we're only using about 1,400 square feet of that for the, the product prep. Right. The rest um, of it is conference room, office, break room, um, bathrooms. Well, and you detail the flow, which is beautiful. I'd like to have you come on sometime in the e-commerce business go and show maybe. Sure. That, that flow was amazing, how brilliant. And I loved your concept where you said you have your external customer and you have your internal customer. And you talked about the UPS driver. Yeah. And I thought that was a really cool awareness of that B2B relationship, you True. know, that you wanted to strengthen that and how they earn their points by the steps they take hauling the boxes. And I've never heard that related, that you had a thoughtfulness towards this well, service provider, towards you. Yeah, it's really about applying the golden rule to every step in your process, right? Treat people the way you want to be treated. Make their job easier, especially if you can do it in a way that doesn't cost your part of the job more time mm -hmm. right. so um, and in doing that you avoid creating bottlenecks the whole the whole um, process of making things more efficient is about identifying bottlenecks and constraints and and taking the pressure off of those right. so if you're always pushing the hard parts of the job down the line you're creating new bottlenecks somewhere else mm -hmm. you don't want to you don't want to move your bottlenecks you want to eliminate them yeah. that was outstanding because I see that in the entire process and flow even with digital marketing and getting that whole flow so that there's not the bottleneck. So that part was really powerful to me. I think people are really curious, um, and then we'll give it a wrap, but I think people are really five million? And then I think people go, yeah, but what about the profits? And I think there comes this questioning of, no, it's, it just can't possibly be that profitable to do. But in my logic-driven mind, I go, well, why in the world would you go to the next year pushing for five million if it hadn't already been profitable with four? So can we confirm conclusively that it was profitable and supporting your family and it's not just sales? Because people really doubt this part. This is sure. where I get the most the pushback. Most yeah. yeah. The reason we were able to scale is because we realized if you do all the hard work on the front end, for, short answer, yes, it's profitable. Mm -hmm. She's frugal. If this wasn't profitable, we wouldn't be pouring money into it, right? I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm, let's say, less frugal than her. <laughs> but, That's what we'll call it. Right. Less frugal. <laughs> yeah, you're frugal. I'm less frugal. Uh, so yeah, we wouldn't keep doing this. Right. It doesn't but, make sense. You got 13 miles to feed. I mean, some have grown and are right. very yeah, we, we have But most of them work for us. So it, it's paying the bills for, yeah. for several families, for a lot right. of households. Uh, yeah. Right. That's pretty cool. So it's several families households are being supported through your business right. by doing local retail arbitrage. 
And, and we clear we clear our profit, and then we get some really cool perks like uh, credit card points for travel. Mm -hmm. You know, we stayed here at the conference for free because of our credit card points. Like so. Wearing underwear for free. Yeah, Fine. yeah. So it's awesome. it's it's absolutely profitable as long as you buy smart when you're doing retail mm -hmm. arbitrage. That's when you make your money. Is when you yeah, buy. Absolutely. Know your numbers. Know, know your numbers. profitability. Because if you're doing it wrong, you you might think you're making money and you're yeah. not profitable. No. You've got to. You have you, good bookkeeping in place. You have to treat it like a business from day one. Don't treat it like a hobby. Treat it like a business. If you treat it like a business, you'll know your numbers. You'll know what's working, what's not working. That's the only way to do it. Yeah. Well, congratulations on your success. I'm excited to hear and know you'll hit the five million, and maybe next year, then you're on to six. And so you've got your scanners. You got all these roles are filled. It's you've got a full blown operation providing a nice income for you and your family and other families as well. Yeah, That's true. awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time. I'm really proud of you guys. I'm glad I got to meet you. Thanks for having thank us. I yeah. really enjoyed meeting you too. All righty. Bye, everyone. Thanks for watching. You can post any questions you have below. Appreciate you all. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye, everyone.